Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and I'm here today to show you how to put a zipper in a pillow back. This is my favorite way to finish off my pillow. I like to have binding around the edges of the pillows that I do, and I like to have zippers in the back. It's just really a professional finish. Um, I use a flap to cover up the zipper so you don't have to look at it. Um, and I'm going to show you my method for making this all come together today. Okay, what you're going to need to make a zipper pillow back is three different pieces of fabric and a zipper. Now, I have a formula that I, I use for the fabric rectangles on the back. And what I do is I take the size of the pillow that I'm making. In this case, I'm making a pillow back for a 20 inch pillow. I cut that in half, the 20 inches, divided by two and then I add at least an inch. So um, that would give me 10 inches, 20 divided by two is 10, add an inch is 11. These are actually 12 inch sections. Sometimes I just add a little extra just to, I'd rather have it too big than too small. And then for the width, I will add just a little bit as well. I'm making a 20 inch pillow and the width that I've used here is about 21 inches, just, just to give me some wiggle room. So you'll want two identical pieces for that. And then you'll want a third piece that you'll use for your flap. And this piece is gonna be the same width as your top and bottom rectangles or a little wider. And it will be four inches wide. Four inches is just a nice size to fold in half and use for your flap. Um, then you're gonna need a zipper. And I really, really like the By Annie handbag zippers for this. There's a couple reason I, reasons I really like her zippers. They're a little bit wider, which makes them easier to sew. And because of that, you won't need a zipper foot when you use her zippers. There's just more fabric here on the zipper tape that really makes it easy. As far as the size of the zipper, you want one that's going to extend beyond both sides of your pillow. You're gonna end up um, trimming it down um, so for my 20 inch pillow, I purchased a 24 inch zipper. The first step that you're going to do is you're actually going to take this pillow flap rectangle, fold it wrong sides together and press. And I've already pressed one to show you. So, um, so we've got that pressed and ready to go. Um, and you wanna think of your pillow as um, the top and the bottom, and the zipper flap will actually go like this so that that folded edge will end up at the bottom of your pillow. Just like, I can show you probably better on this one, that that folded edge of the pillow flap faces the bottom. And from this pillow also, you can see that you don't have to use the same fabric for the top and the bottom. I used different fabrics here, and you can also quilt your pillow back fabrics as well. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. This one, I had extra pieces that were left over from something else and they were already quilted, so I used them for the pillow back. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is make a little sandwich. We're gonna take the pillow back top rectangle, and we're going to take the flap that we've folded and pressed, and we're gonna take the zipper, and this is the order that you're going to layer them. The pillow top, back top, right sides up, and then you're going to do the flap with the raw edges aligned with the edge of the pillow flap so that the next step is to add the zipper. And you're gonna notice that the teeth are going to be the same uh, on the top or bottom, whichever way you have it turned. So I know left-handed people might have it reversed, but the teeth are gonna be on the same side as the folded edge. So you're gonna have the raw edge of the flap that's folded. So those two raw edges, right sides together with the pillow back top and the zipper. And what I like to use is are these Clover Wonder Clips to pin this together. Oh, one more thing. Make sure that the zipper stop at the end is past the edge. That way we can just cut that off. You won't need it. 
and also make sure that you're, you're kind of centered um, so that this other stop is off the end. Okay, so I'm gonna pin these using the Clover Wonder Clips. And then I'm gonna go sew a one quarter inch seam through all four layers. There's one layer from the pillow back top, two layers from the pillow flap, and then the fourth layer is the zipper itself. And um, I just kind of keep all these together. I've also heard of people using sewing tape, you know, kind of a sticky two-sided tape to keep these together. But I just feel like the Clover Wonder Clips do a great job. And then you don't have to worry about the basting tape. Okay, I'm gonna take these to the sewing machine. I'm gonna sew a one quarter inch seam and come back. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine. I just wanted to um, show you one more thing before. I, I wasn't sure if I had made this super clear before. I wanted to make sure that the zipper was face down. And I think you could see it before the way it was laying, but I just wanted to make sure that with that first seam, the zipper is face down, everything else is face up. Um, so I sewed that quarter inch seam. So now my zipper is attached to my flap and it's also attached to the back. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go over to the iron and I'm going to iron everything. I'm going to pull the flap out and iron everything towards the flap so that on the top, um, I'm just going to really press this seam so that the um, pillow back top is pressed up away from the flap. And the other thing I'm gonna do after I iron is I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam right here, just to kind of to seal that off. So I'm gonna go over there, I'm gonna iron this, and I'm gonna sew that seam, and then the I'll come back and I'll show you how to attach it to the bottom. Okay, I'm back now from the ironing board and also my trip to the sewing machine. I pressed everything and then I did add a row of top stitching a quarter of an inch away. So from this side, you can see this is what it looks like now. The zipper is firmly attached to the um, flap and to the top. And if you were to zip up your zipper, you would see that this is in perfect position for the top of the pillow and this is the bottom of the pillow. So now all we have to do is sew this to the zipper bottom. And what I like to do is I like to just, it's so easy to get zippers twisted around. So I like to keep it like this while I pin it and just kind of line everything up. And I say pin, but again, I'm gonna use these Clover Wonder Clips. So now we're pinning the wrong side of the pillow back bottom to the top side of the lower part of the zipper. And again, not really pinning, I guess I should say clipping the Clover Wonder Clips. And again, I like to, to do it this way while the zipper is closed so that I know everything's going the right direction. I've done this before and had to take everything out because the zipper got twisted. So this is just kind of my fail safe method. Okay, after I get it clipped, this is what it looks like from the other side. I'm going to unzip that zipper while I sew so I don't have any problems. With these wider zippers, it, it really makes it easier to sew, but I'm still gonna unzip it. I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna sew another quarter inch seam and then I'll go ahead and press that one down before I come back and show you. Okay, I've come back from the ironing board and the sewing machine. The bottom part of the zipper is now attached. I pressed that down and I did the quarter inch top stitch like I did for my top. So if you zip it up, you can see that you now have your pillow back. Um, and so let me just show you now quickly what you're gonna do to kind of finish this up. And um, when you're ready to put your pillow together, you're gonna turn this over. Well, first of all, um, before you sew it to your pillow, you want to unzip it partway so that 
um, the zipper is somewhere in the middle. You don't want the zipper over here and getting it cut off when you trim everything. So make sure the zipper is part way into the middle and then you're going to flip this over and you're going to have it the wrong side up. Okay. And then when you have your pillow top, I'm just going to use a quilt block just to kind of demonstrate, but you'll, you'll center your quilt block over the, the quilt back. And this block is a little bit smaller than what I'm going to use for the pillow front here, but you'll get the idea. At this point, you're going to trim your pillow back to the same size as your pillow front. And that's why I really do like to make them a little bit oversized so that I don't have to worry about going to put my pillow together and having the back be too small. So you're just going to center it and you're going to trim on all four sides. And once you've trimmed, you can use Wonder Clips to clip your, um, we'll just pretend like that's trimmed, and you can clip your pillow front to your pillow back all the way around. At that point, it just gets really easy. You'll sew a quarter inch seam all the way around. If you um, have, if you're using like a quilt block, if you have something where it doesn't matter as much, you, you could do a half inch seam if you, if you have enough fabric left over. Um, but quarter inch seam, most likely, and then they will be connected. And you can see that when you open your zipper in the back, there's your pillow front, and then you're gonna finish it all by binding, just like you would a quilt. You're just gonna add binding around all four edges like you would a quilt. Um, I'm actually going to unzip this one all the way so you can see um, how that works. So, and this one also, I, I'll note this, I didn't use one of those by Annie zippers and I really don't like it. It's hard to grab the zipper pull. Um, I just really like those by Annie zippers better. But anyway, that's how you go about making a pillow back with a zipper in it for your pillow. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today on how to install a zipper in a pillow back. If you go to the blog, I do have a downloadable PDF that you can get to give you the measurement sizes that I talked about for some of the most common sizes of pillows. I also have the formula on that PDF that I use to figure out that measurements in case you're making a pillow from a different size. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and thanks so much for stopping by.